Hi, welcome to Building Zero Friction Apps on Teams using SSO and Graph. I'm your host, Nick Kramer. Today, we're going to talk about single sign-on into Azure Active Directory using conditional access policies to uh, ensure that your tabs are accessed from secure devices, using granular permissions to access Graph APIs, and using resource-specific consent to call Graph APIs without needing to involve an admin. Before single sign-on, users had to log into each Teams app, even though they were already logged into Microsoft Teams. With single sign-on, there's no need to log in again. And of course, single sign-in works on mobile as well, exactly as you'd expect. We're also bringing single sign-on to bots and messaging extensions. Before SSO, bots would send you a message asking you to sign in and send it over and over again. With single sign-on, there's no need to say who you are because Teams already knows. We just need you to give permission to tell the bot who you are. And that's a great opportunity to give additional permissions. This app also requires access to your calendar so that you can check out your upcoming meetings. Once you've given permission, the sign-in UI disappears. There's no sign-in messages cluttering up our conversation view. Let's see what happens when we relaunch Teams. When we go back to the bot, it still knows who we are and it still has consent. Everything just works. Single sign-on means your users never need to sign in again. It just works. And that means a wonderful simplification for the authentication experience. Permissions are a different beast. We'll talk more about that in a minute. The tab authentication SSO is available today, and bots and messaging extensions are coming soon. And while I like to talk about the end user experience for authentication, it's also a great simplification for the developer experience. Now you can get your authorization done in a single function call. You call Microsoft Teams.authentication.getauth token. You pass those two callbacks, what to do on success and what to do on failure. And that's it. That's all your authentication logic in five lines of code. Some tips and tricks to remember when working with single sign-on. First is that your Azure Active Directory app has to have a URI for callback, and that callback needs to have the same domain name as your Teams tab. Basically, before we give you a token to the Teams tab, we need to make sure it is, in fact, associated with that app that has registration in Active Directory. And that URI associated with that Active Directory can't be azurewebsites.net, at least not yet. We had some concerns about what turned out to be a phantom security issue, and we are fixing that, but it's not deployed yet. Also, keep in mind that GetAuth token provides you only the bare minimum permissions. You can request additional permissions using the Azure Active Directory on behalf of Flow, but the output of GetAuth token is only the bare minimum, basically user.read and equivalent permissions. So check out that on behalf of Flow if you need more than that. Uh, the video on the right here, aka.ms slash blah blah blah, that goes into some great detail on how to do that. We also have a lot of great written document there on the left. We've also added support for Azure Active Directory conditional access for your tabs so that you can use your tabs even if your admin has set up conditional access policies requiring the use of a trusted device. Until recently, most Teams Graph APIs required one of two permissions, either Group Read All or Group Read Write All, two incredibly powerful permissions. To give you the granularity you need, we've introduced more than two dozen new permissions so that you can specify only the parts of the resource that you actually want to grant access to. To illustrate this, when you grant Group Read Write All, you're giving that app read write access to all teams in the tenant and all parts of those teams, which is a lot of permission. With granular permissions, you can give that app access to just the parts of the team that it needs. In this example, just channel names, not channel settings or channel messages. Because it's still uh, accessing all teams, it is still an admin consent scenario only admins can speak on behalf of all teams in the tenant. 
With resource-specific consent, you can narrow that down even further, giving apps access to only a single team. Let's see it in action. Before resource-specific consent, most Teams Graph APIs required group.read.all or group.readwrite.all, which meant admin consent was required. When they did that, it didn't tell you up front that admin consent or these permissions were required. This app needs the ability to read channel messages, but it doesn't tell you when you install it. As a result, it surprises you later. And the problem is, you're not an admin, so you're not able to grant those permissions, so you just hit this brick wall. Let's see how resource-specific consent addresses this. Again, this app needs to be able to create channels and read messages, and it tells you that up front. And when you install this app, because the permissions are now scoped to an individual team, that team owner installation is sufficient to grant those permissions. And as a result, when you go to run Zapier, it actually runs. It doesn't ask you for more permissions. You already have them. Let's switch over to the Zapier website. Now that the Teams app has been installed, the website also has access to that same team. We're going to take some zaps that we started writing earlier and connect them to that team we just installed to. And this zap is going to watch the to-do list. When the new to-do list is created, it's going to create a new channel for that to-do list. We'll skip testing. Who needs testing? And then try it out in production here. So we'll create a new task list. That's what triggers the zap to run. And once we create that new task list, Zapier detects the new task list and will create a channel for us. Here it is. And they've also posted a nice welcome message for us. So there you go. Through the power of resource-specific consent, Zapier has an app that creates new channels in the team without needing admin involvement. Resource-specific consent introduces 13 new permissions including the ability to create channels in the team the app is installed in and the ability to read the messages of the team. The first step to using resource-specific consent is updating your Teams app manifest to point to the app ID that you're linking to and to point to the application permissions that you need. So this app needs the ability to delete channels, channel.delete.group, it needs the ability to read messages, channel message.read.group, and it needs teamsapp.read.group, the ability to see which apps are installed in the team. And the other part of this is the ID. Web application info.id is the Azure app ID that runs graph code and is the app ID that you get a token for in order to make graph calls. The second step to using RSC is to get a token the same way you would any other application permissions token. Ultimately, there's, there's SDK ways of doing this as well, but ultimately it comes down to post to login.microsoftonline.com. You pass in the tenant ID, you pass in the app ID, you pass in the secret, and you get back a token. And that token gives you access to whatever that app has access to. You don't need to pass in which team you're talking about. The token actually doesn't say which team it talks about. It gives you access to whichever teams your app has access to. And the third step is you call an API just like you would any other graph API. In this example, I did a post to slash team slash ID slash channels, which creates a new channel and I pass in a bearer token the same way I would any other graph API call. Some tips and tricks to keep in mind when working with resource specific consent. First one is team owners grant access to team data. There's a lot of information packed into those words. First, it means that only team owners are allowed to install RSC apps into the team. The team owner owns the team. They need to decide who has access to team data. 
Second part is it's only for Teams. RSC is only for Teams. It's not for chats. A chat is not a team. It's also not for private channels. That's a little more subtle. The reason for that one is private channels are data that the team owner doesn't necessarily have access to. And you don't want the team owner granting access to something that they themselves can't access. So we don't support private channels using RSC applications. Third point here is that when you grant access to team data, the team has to already exist. There is no concept of granting access to a team that doesn't exist yet. So you can't use RSC to create teams. Another set of things to think through is when you use RSC, it is application permissions. It's not a delegated permission scenario. There is no notion of the logged in user when you go to make your API call. And that can be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on what you're trying to do, and you just need to keep it in mind. It can be bad if you are accidentally allowing the user to do something the user shouldn't do. If, for instance, you're running in a team where the team owner has said no one else is allowed to create new channels, regular users are not allowed to create new channels, and then your application is running on behalf of a regular user and your application goes to create new channels, there's nothing to stop your application from creating new channels, and that might be a bad thing. Or it could be a good thing. It really depends on your application. Maybe your team owner has said, I don't trust those average users to create new channels, but I do trust this app to create the right kind of channels under the right circumstances with the right naming policies and settings. So think through whether what makes sense for your scenario and enforce the restrictions that make sense for your scenario. Last thing to call out here is that uh, the scenarios I've shown so far are pure RSC, but it's also perfectly legitimate to mix and match RSC with delegated permissions. You'll end up with two tokens, one token for doing RSC calls and a second token for doing delegated permissions calls, perhaps to send mail is a very common one. But it's perfectly legitimate to have two tokens and choose which token to pass depending on what you're trying to accomplish. So some great documentation links down there will tell you everything you wanted to know and more about RSC. From an admin's perspective, we have a full set of controls. There's the uh, users can consent to apps accessing company data for the groups they own setting, which is basically the is RSC enabled for regular users or not setting. If you turn this off, then only admins are allowed to install RSC applications. The default for this setting is going to mirror the setting above. If you allow users to consent to regular graph apps, then by default you can allow you will allow users to consent to RSC apps and vice versa. If the top setting is off, the default for the second setting is also off. Uh, but you can control those independently. If you trust your group and team and group owners more than you trust your average users. You can turn that on. You can also say that a certain set of users is trusted and the others are not to use RSC. The usual settings in the Teams Admin Modern Portal also apply. If you turn off third-party apps, then no one is allowed to install a third-party app that uses RSC. And if you create app permission policies that allow you to specify which apps a given set of users can run and install, then that also applies to RSC. If the app permission policy says you're not allowed to run a certain app, then you're also not allowed to install that certain app, even if it uses RSC. Finally, RSC also supports sideloading, aka custom applications. The idea here is that you write a custom application and you upload it to the tenant that you wrote it in. Uh, and we enforce that requirement for RSC. We insist that if you are uploading a custom app to a tenant, that the associated Azure app ID is registered in the same tenant. It's basically proof that you in fact wrote the custom app you claim to write. And so that's a great additional security measure we've put in place for RSC. I also want to plug some of the new work we've done for managing applications in the Teams Modern Admin Portal. This is the Manage Apps page that shows you a full list of all the apps in the tenant 
and allows you to, with a few clicks, manage the permissions for those applications. You can see which permissions the app requires. You can use the admin portal here to grant those permissions. And that applies to RSC as well. And to learn more about that, I encourage you to go to the PR102, or sorry, PR132 uh, pre record session. One final goodie for the admins is that we also have PowerShell commandlet support for installing RSC apps. Add Teams application installation allows you to install a Teams app into a particular team and that works for both RSC apps and non-RSC apps. When you use it with RSC you need, you need to specify which permissions you're willing to grant that application. In this case channel.create.group and teamsettings.read.group are the permissions we're willing to grant that app. And if that app needs those permissions or fewer, the app installation succeeds. If the app needs more permissions, then the app installation fails. We try never to half install an application. So either it succeeds and has the permissions it needs, or it fails because it doesn't have all the permissions it needs. And the reason we pass in that parameter there is to make sure that you as an admin are not surprised. You don't want a script that grants that tries to install an app and then someday later the app is upgraded to require more permissions than when you wrote that script. If that happens, you want to be notified that that app needs more permissions than you were expecting. So let's recap what we've learned. We've learned that Azure Active Directory single sign-on means that your users never have to sign on again. And we've learned about three great features to help with authorization. We've learned about conditional access for Azure Active Directory. We've learned about granular permissions that allow you to scope your application to only certain parts of a team. And we've learned about resource-specific consent that allows you to confine an application to only certain teams where the team owner has granted the app access to team data. Thank you for watching Building Friction-Free Apps using single sign-on and resource-specific consent. We look forward to seeing what you build.